In Elixir, GenServer module provides a standard way for writing concurrent methods and holding state. It works by wrapping your regular module in a set of special functions that abstract the way processes talk to each other. The syntax of these functions can seem a bit overwhelming, and because of their rigid format requirements, figuring out proper setup isn't trivial. There are many examples and tutorials, including the standard documentation, that work great. This presentation, however, aims to take more of a deconstructive approach. We're going to go over the structure of a typical GenServer module, break down the setup and the syntax of these special functions, and use pointy arrows to show what's happening at every step. First, let's talk about the setup. This is the most basic example of the GenServer module. The start link method starts a GenServer process. When you run it, you get a tuple with OK and process ID when it started successfully. Now, the process ID is its own special data type. It's not a string or a number, so you can't just copy and paste it. To use it, you have to assign it to a variable, and you will need it in order to call methods on that specific GenServer process. Notice inside there we call GenServer module start link. The first argument is the module name itself. More often though, what you're going to see is the special module variable, which is an elixir atom that refers to the name of the module that it's in. So what that means is the GenServer module wraps all of the methods inside of this current module and starts a detached process with all of the module's functionality available inside it. The second argument is the initial state that is going to be held inside of this process. But this is a bit of an incomplete picture. There is an implied method that gets called here. The init method gets called when you call start link. And whatever this data happens to be, it gets passed into here. It's also important to note that whatever else happens inside of this method, you are required to respond with a two element tuple with the first element being OK and the second element being the initial state that this GenServer process is going to hold. So this initial data can be any Elixir data type, a string or map or a list. This implicit calling of a method is a little unusual for Elixir, but it does happen. If we change this method a bit and add this line, what you're going to see when you call basic start link is this output. The init method is not being called explicitly but it is being called. In fact, as you saw earlier, you don't need it in order to start a GenServer process. The thing to take away from this is that the init method is used to set the state of the GenServer process and it must respond in the given format. Now, what you're going to see in case you don't have the proper return value is this error response with the GenServer process not starting successfully. So just remember, OK data tuple is what the return value of the init method should be and the purpose of the init method is to set the initial state. Now let's discuss how we can access and update this state. Let's go back to our basic example. But instead of nothing, let's pass in something more meaningful, like a greeting. And instead of a string, let's assign this greeting to a map with a greeting key and set that as the initial state. So now that we set this as the initial state, how do we access it? And this is where the special GenServer callback functions come in. Notice these two new methods, getMyState and handleCall. Let's go over how they're used. First, we start a GenServer process. Then we use the basic PID variable to call getMyState, which yields a greeting hello map. When you call getMyState inside of it, the process ID gets passed to the GenServer call method. This method takes the process ID and a tuple that is used to identify this method. Inside of a running process, a callback method, handle call, gets triggered. Notice how we are not passing the process ID into it. We are not explicitly calling it. It's triggered by the GenServer call method. So, this tuple matched this specific handle call method. In fact, you could just run GenServer call method with the given process ID completely outside of this module and it would trigger handle call method in the exactly the same way. So in this case, get my state is just there for convenience. Let's zoom in on the handle call method. Handle call is synchronous, meaning it will block further code execution until it's done. In this case, until it sends a reply. 
The first argument is a tuple that has an atom to match to a particular handle call method. That tuple could also hold extra arguments for this method. We'll see an example of this later. The second argument is a reference to the origin of this callback. We won't be using it here. The third argument is the current state. If you recall from the example, it will be the greetings map. I want to emphasize again that you are not passing any of these arguments explicitly. The particular module will be identified by the process ID, and the particular handle call method inside of the process will be triggered by a pattern matching to this tuple. The process itself is what calls the handle call method, and you have to structure it in this exact way. Next, let's talk about the response. Again, it has to be structured in this exact format. The first element is the reply atom. It indicates that this method will have a reply. That is typically the case for the handle call. The second element is the response of the return value. Here, we're responding with the entire state, but that's not always the case. The third element is the new state that this process will hold. In this case, we are just keeping it the same. And that's the basic anatomy of this method. Now let's try something more interesting. Let's add a method to update the state with a new greeting and a method that just returns the current greeting. I want to make a quick point that the module method names don't have to correspond to the gen server call tuple. Alright, first let's start the gen server process. Now let's see what the current greeting is. We pass in the process ID here to this method which triggers this callback and responds with this. Now let's change the greeting to something different. Notice we now pass the process ID and the new greeting. And now the gen server call method has a tuple with two elements that matches this method with a new greeting as an additional argument. In this handle call method, we update the greetings map, set, and return the new state. Now, if we run get my greeting method again, we should get ahoy. One thing to note is that when we are setting the greeting, we don't necessarily want it to return anything. We just care that the gen server process state gets updated. If we don't need to wait for this method to respond, we could take advantage of another callback that could operate asynchronously, meaning not blocking further code execution, taking advantage of Elixir's ability to execute code concurrently. But more on that at another time. My hope for this video was that it caused a light bulb moment for someone and they finally get a new concept. Obviously there's a lot more to learn and if you still feel lost or like you're missing something, don't give up. Follow a few tutorials, come back and read the documentation again. You'll be surprised where you'll find the missing puzzle pieces along the way. Thank you for watching.